Baseball is all I know. I mean, I don't really know a whole lot about anything, but I feel like I know a few things about baseball. As a pitcher, if there's a, a guy that does not like to be knocked down, and I know he doesn't like to be knocked down, I'll knock him down. Don't we just, just doing stuff when we're not paying attention? He's focus here, dog. Too fidgety. I can't just stand in one spot. And Handle your head. ADD, sir. <laughs> I've tried. The doctors won't prescribe me. <laughs> <laughs> I like how this is nice and lined up and shaped. <laughs> Grizzly Adams did have a beard. Yeah, yeah, and looking right at him. That's right. I believe in God. And the only thing that scares me is Kaiser Sose. Hey, fellas, I want to give the audience a little perspective into your world as, as major league pitchers. When, when the manager or the pitching coach comes out onto the mound, what types of conversations do you have with the dude? Wait, you changed your name to McLovin? <laughs> McLovin? What kind of a stupid name is that, Fogel? What, are you trying to be an Irish R&B singer? Not a whole lot. Most of it's just saying that they're out there to give me a breather, because uh, if they're usually out there, that means I'm backing up a lot of bases or throwing a lot of balls. It's usually just a quick, uh, hey, let's get back on track. And uh, in your mind, you're like, oh, sh just head back to the dugout. What, you think I like avoiding my wife and kids to hang out with 19-year-old girls all day? Do you ever, like, a, do you negotiate with the manager if he wants to take you out? Like, if you want to stand your ground, like, hey, man, just leave me alone, right? I'm, in, I'm, in my, I'm getting into my zone. I love lamp. Do you really love the lamp, or are you just saying it because you saw it? I love lamp. Can you say shit like that? Um, you can. I don't know how it'll fly. Um, you know, you can also offer him, you know, maybe, you know, a couple hundred dollars or something to let you finish the game. So I think I can take it a little step further and I'll offer probably a thousand dollars, you know? You know, sometimes, okay, the manager comes out, and then just the other dude just like... And just, the other dude's like, okay, the third baseman, shortstop. Second baseman, first baseman. And then, and then catchers you like right here, it's like, right. Gum, gum, gum. like what are the other, other dudes saying? You guys might not know this, but I consider myself a bit of a loner. I tend to think of myself as a one-man wolf pack. But when my sister brought Doug home, I knew he was one of my own. So were there two of us, there were two of us in the wolf pack. And six months ago, when Doug introduced me to you guys, I thought, wait a second, could it be? And now I know for sure I just added two more guys to my wolf pack. They're being annoying is what they are. They shouldn't be on our mound. They right. should be at their position getting ready to play and coming on our mound. It's a little uh, frustrating. It pisses me off, but it does. You know, to be honest with you. Dude, just start launching the kicks. Aaron Hill doesn't need to be on my mound. That's my mound. He needs to be over at second base. Just, yeah, making sure he's not making errors right. to jack up the box score. That's right, because those are our runs. He's going to go a little Dallas Braden on your ass right now. No one ever says, like, oh, dude, hey, the uh, the Miami Dolphin cheerleaders are here. <laughs> when you, or, or like, you can, when you guys are playing on the road, it could be like some city, the end of the, is there any ever conversation about people watching? Oh, you, you might occasionally get a little funny stuff here and there. Sometimes you think you have true love and then you catch the early flight home from San Diego and a couple of nude people jump out of your bathroom blindfolded like a goddamn magic show ready to double team your girlfriend. I remember when we were, we were in New Yorker this year and I know our catcher went out, Ricky was pitching through a CG, but uh, he's like, holy crap, there's Miss USA sitting in the stands. In real life? In real life. She's really there? Yeah, she was there to watch Ricky. It was unbelievable. Dude, that sounds amazing to me. Or was that just a regular day? Hey, that's just my life. That's just my life. Yeah. I guess it's just the life of uh, Ricky Romero. What can I say? Well, I could say that's fucking awesome. That's what I can say. It's pretty awesome, yeah. I mean, sorry about it. <laughs>